If you're fighting with your spouse, or if there's a constant tension between the two of you in your relationship or marriage, or if innocent conversations just suddenly erupt into volcanic-like explosions, well then you're in the right place. Because in this video, I'm going to teach you the three most common mistakes couples make when fighting and how to steer clear of them. Hi, I'm Bruce Music from loveatfirstfight.com. And I help couples fix their troubled relationships and marriages. And in my work with fighting couples, I've noticed that almost always when a couple's fighting, they make one, if not all three, of these simple mistakes that end up escalating an argument into a heated fight that ends with door slamming, icy silences, and one of you sleeping on the couch. So what are these three mistakes? Well, the first is communicating when you're triggered. Have you ever been in the heat of the moment and you've said something you knew you'd later regret, but you couldn't stop the words coming out of your mouth, even though you knew you shouldn't be saying them, and almost in slow motion they came out and like caused a huge amount of hurt in your relationship? Yeah, me too. Not something I'm proud of. Well, that happens because when you're triggered, you literally become stupid, kind of like a chimpanzee. You see, we all have a part of our brain that's like a chimpanzee's brain get the reference now <laughs> see and this part of our brain is called a reptilian brain and it evolved to help us survive and when we're triggered by our partner it gets activated and it does one of two things it either gets ready to fight or it gets ready to run like hell in the opposite direction if it gets ready to fight it drains all the blood from our brain into our arms so that we can fight if it's getting ready to flee or to run like hell in the opposite direction, it drains all the blood from our brain down into our legs so that we have oxygen in our legs so we can run faster. In any event, there's no blood left in our brain, which renders us literally stupid because our brain isn't getting enough oxygen, which is why we say dumb things when we're triggered. So don't do it. Don't communicate when you're triggered. When you feel that flush of anger in your face, when you feel yourself getting triggered, you know what that's like. Pause, tell your partner, baby, time out. I'm triggered. I'm gonna go for a walk for half an hour and come back and finish this with you. Or sit down and journal your thoughts out for half an hour and then come back to your partner when your heart rate's lowered, when you're feeling normal again and you can have a normal conversation without getting triggered. If one of you is triggered in the conversation, you may be able to avoid conflict if the other one has their wits about them. If both of you are triggered in the conversation, which can happen so fast, you've got World War III on your hands. So mistake number two is a common one. It's trying to resolve the surface problem. So imagine this. Your spouse is yelling at you. You've forgotten to take the trash out for the fifth time. And you know this conversation is not going to go well. So what do you do? Do you A take the trash out, B, apologize and make it up to them, C, tell them to stop nagging and that you'll do it later, or D, start explaining why you are too busy to take the trash out. What would you do? Well, if you chose any of these, you'd be sleeping on the opposite sides of the bed that evening. Why? Because this was a bit of a trick question. You see, your spouse isn't angry about you not taking the trash out five times in a row. They're angry about something far more important than that. If you probe deeper, you'll discover that beneath their surface complaint of you not taking the trash out, your spouse is actually angry about what not taking the trash out means about the state of the emotional connection between the two of you. Perhaps they're thinking something like, well, if you can't be trusted to do something as simple as take the trash out, how on earth are they ever going to trust you to do the big things like raise the children or look after the finances or stay faithful for that matter? See what I mean here? And if you try and resolve the surface complaint about not taking the trash out, you won't get anywhere. Instead, ask your partner about their softer feelings beneath the surface of the complaint and soothe those. Comfort them. Reassure them. Soothe those feelings and that's what's going to resolve your problem. If you're participating in my Love at First Fight coaching program, then in the second module of the program, we'll spend an entire week learning how to soothe those deeper emotions for your partner so that you can really de-escalate conflict really, really quickly. Okay, the third mistake that couples make when fighting is what I call perceiving the phantom attack. Have you ever seen a toddler in a supermarket that's lost its parents? 
it bawls its eyes out and cries as loud as it can to get its parents' attention. Or what tends to happen is the toddler, the little baby, will shut down and go internal because it's so afraid and just sit and wait, hoping that its parents will find it again. Both of these reactions are actually survival strategies that are protesting the parents moving out of safe proximity of the child. Now what most people don't know is that as adults, we do the same things with our romantic partners. When we perceive that our partner has moved out of safe physical or emotional proximity, we protest them moving out of proximity by making a noise like the baby screaming or going really quiet. Yeah, really advanced, I know. But because we don't understand this, when our partner gets angry and is making a noise, we incorrectly think that they're trying to attack us and we end up defending ourselves. Or when our partner gets quiet, we incorrectly think that they're trying to punish us and then we go in and try and attack them or pull them out of their shell. But they're not. They're just protesting the disconnections, the distance emotionally between the two of you. And they're doing it by making a noise or going quiet. And if you respond with a counterattack, you're just going to escalate the conversation into World War III and then you're both going to hurt each other. So remember, when your partner gets upset, defending yourself like your life is at stake is inappropriate. It's just going to escalate the conflict. Instead, do this. Soothe them like you would soothe a baby crying. Not in a condescending pat on the head, here, here, now, now kind of way, but soothe them by saying something like, honey, I notice you're really upset. I imagine you are hurting. Tell me what's going on for you. I'm interested. Or tell me what's going on for you. How can I support you? So there you have them. The three biggest mistakes that couples make when fighting and what to do about it. Go try the strategies I've suggested and let me know in the comments below how they worked out for you. Also, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up or click the like button down below. It helps me spread this education to more people who need it. And finally, if your relationship's in trouble and there's constant tension between you or you're walking on eggshells or one of you withdraw is withdrawing and the other one is kind of chasing and becoming more needy, go subscribe to this channel now and then go to www.loveatfirstfight.com. You can click on the link here, it'll take you right there and sign up for my free Fix Your Relationship video training program. And I'll teach you a communication skill completely free of charge that will help you de-escalate your conflict in your relationship in a matter of seconds. So thank you for watching and thank you for your time. I'm Bruce Music. I'm here to support you fixing your troubled relationships. So reach out if you need me. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.